Hello everyone, my name is Squizzle and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you guys a few tips and some tricks and as well as answering a few frequently asked questions that I get in my streams. If you're new to the channel, you might be wondering, well, who is this guy and why does he think he can help me? Well, my name is Quizzle, and I think I can help you out because, well, I'm the first person to beat this game on classic mode and I've also beaten the game using a knife only with the exception of the final boss. So here's a list of the frequently asked questions that I get. I'll just be answering them really quickly. So number one, what does each mode unlock after you beat it? So first of all, I do want to say that if you're worried about getting enough green gel, don't worry about it because basically no matter what playthrough you go for, if you just start New Game Plus and you start killing zombies, green gel will be plentiful, ammo and all that stuff will be plentiful. Do not worry about which difficulty you have to play on New Game Plus. But remember that there is that restriction on New Game Plus where you cannot basically go a higher difficulty level than what you originally chose on your new game. Thus, I suggest playing on Classic Mode or Nightmare Mode. And so these techniques later on in the video will help you out with that. Now, these are all clips. If you have noticed with me in them, that's because I've completed this game first on Survival Mode on stream. Everybody was really hyped and excited to see the game. Thank you guys for supporting the stream. And then I was the first person to beat it on classic mode and then I beat it on casual mode with a knife only and then nightmare mode with a knife only as well. Of course a knife only is with a few exceptions but that's not the point of this video. Let's get on to the next question. Where do you save on classic mode? This comes in another form also asked when do you save on classic mode? So. If you don't know, Classic Mode is the hardest mode on Evil Within 2. It is the closest thing you'll get to an equivalent of Akumu Mode to Evil Within 1. I also get this sub-question a lot, and that is, is this mode, Classic Mode, more difficult than Akumu Mode from the first game? And a simple answer is no, it's not as difficult as Akumu Mode. However, I do want to say it's better than Akumu Mode. Why? Because it's more punishing than Akumu Mode, and there's less cheap deaths. What that means is that, like in this game, there are no enemies running at you with instant death guns or instant death explosive crossbows, and you don't get shot from the entire map away from a guy who has a sniper rifle. You know, it's nothing too ridiculous like that. And that, I feel, is a very, very fair, and the majority of gamers would enjoy a classic mode experience versus a ton of cheap deaths. I feel like that's a very, appeals to a very niche or niche type of. Uh, individual so again I do think it's a better decision they made a good decision by not putting those enemies in the game and having less cheap deaths like that all right so where in classic mode should you save now the easy general guideline is two simple rules every three to four chapters you should definitely save because you have seven saves and there are 17 chapters in the game also you want to save before any big boss fight because you could easily die there or perhaps a hard section in the game that you might remember if you have played it on Nightmare or whatever your first playthrough was because you can't start classic mode unless you've beaten the game before. So if you're unfamiliar, the enemy spawns and the enemy type are the same in Nightmare mode to classic mode. So if you're having particular trouble in a certain area, you can always just lower the difficulty while playing classic mode to Nightmare mode and practice that spot and then come back and try it again if you have fragmented your saves. So some of you I know don't want to just go with the general guidelines, you understand that, but you are having particular difficulty and want to know almost exactly or around which area you should save to make it a little easier. So I've got you covered, do not worry about that. Here are the best places to save in the game. So you want to save probably either at the beginning of chapter 3 or after you finish the main quest before entering the big garage thing. You'll know what I'm talking about when you get there with uh, while you're chasing Lily. You'll definitely want to save around there because you don't want to waste your time on basically redoing the whole opening cutscene and dying from the beginning. It depends on how comfortable you are. If you're not comfortable with the garage scene or this scene, just I have a tip for this particular part. You can do this and just enjoy your time on the ladder. They won't be able to get you. I'm not sure if they're going to patch this, but this will help in this area just in case. Remember the door is a time thing, so you can just sit on the ladder and, you know, drink a cup of coffee, whatever you need, and then the door will open. The zombies should go away at some point, and uh, yeah, you'll be fine. Oh, the witch! <laughs> 
Also, before you save or after you save, I do really want to mention quickly that there is this mini game and it has some amazing rewards. I definitely suggest completing this mini game and getting all of the achievements, all of the collectibles that you can from it. And in classic mode, they give you a lot more herbs and a lot more gunpowder than any other mode, making this very, very valuable. So make sure you do it before you save or after you save, before heading to the next area, or you could save it for later depending on what you what you decide. So for your next save, or even possibly your first save if you've been really confident and didn't need to save for the first few chapters, this is where you would want to save next because it's right before you're about to enter the Obscura area. There's a bit of a gatekeeper so you'll definitely want to save here just to be safe and uh, yeah. Alright, so your next save is going to be around chapter 7, chapter 8. So you can either save right before you enter the theater, before the paintings to enter the theater if you think you might die there, or right before fighting Stefano, depending on your confidence level. This is definitely the area you want to save in because, well, there's a lot of things that can instantly kill you on the way opening the theater, or perhaps in the theater itself you could die instantly. After beating Stefano, you should be in an area like this after some little while. And uh, my no. advice to you here is never to rush opening this gate. Kill everything before you oh open God. this gate. Oh, Otherwise, this might happen to you. No! No! <laughs> oh, no! Alright, so for this area, I definitely want to give a few tips. Use the barrel, shoot the oil so that it goes on fire and, let, uh, and uh, light up the zombies. You don't always have to save it until the no, witch no, part wait, or the crawler the part. You can use it right away if you, so, if you so choose. There's a syringe on the chair and there's also a syringe in the back in one of the boxes. If you want to fight these guys a little bit smarter, what you can do is you can wait for some of them to fight against Torres or you can bait them around the room while Torres is shooting. After going through a bit of a stealth mission through these flame guys, you'll get here to Torres' safe room. Inside her safe room are a bunch of things you can pick them up, but you'll definitely want to save either here or on the way to getting to O'Neill after listening to the residual memory with Hoffman in it. Alright, so this part in the game is actually one of the difficult, more difficult parts in the game. I suggest using a smoke bolt because that is probably one of the most powerful items in the game. If you can, try to focus upgrading that to its third upgrade level. What that should do is allow you to sneak kill after using the smoke bolt. Here it's especially important because you get rushed by so many of these flame guys. So you also want to save before entering this part of the game. And you should be able to, you'll know it's this part of the game because Hoffman will be standing there asking you if you're ready to go. Alright, so if you've been following my suggestions on when you should save, you should have about two saves here, or one save if you had to use a save before the box heads and uh, Laura fight. So no harm, no foul, if you did have to use that extra save, you should have about one save right now, and this is the place you should definitely save. So, um, if you do have two saves, the second save will be right before the final boss. You should be familiar with it since this should technically be your second playthrough. And um, yeah, those are the last two spots. Don't worry if you don't have enough ammo, I'm sure you know this, but the final boss has uh, ammo drops. So if you don't have enough ammo, it will give you ammo through these little spiders. And um, there's also ammo inside the frozen zombies that you can either break with a fire axe or have the final boss break for you. What should I start my first playthrough on? Now this is an interesting question. By this question, I assume you guys mean which difficulty should I select on my first playthrough? I personally recommend survival mode, but it actually doesn't matter too much. What this game does and what survival horror games do is they either they take your ammo and your supplies and they shrink it to make it feel like you have to really scrounge for resources and that's a big part of survival horror games and that's something that this game actually does and doesn't limit you too much with. This is something that they wanted to stress when they released this game and they actually did it well. So if you need more items, more ammo, etc, etc, you can just explore the city before going on to the next part. This game rewards players who take their time and really gather all the resources before going forward. If you do so, you'll have an easier time progressing through the game compared to somebody who just ran through the game from start to end with no supplies whatsoever. 
that's going to be it for my coverage on Evil Within 2. If you guys found it helpful, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, be sure to check out the channel before you hit that subscribe button. I've got tons of different types of content, and um, yeah, I'm definitely going to be covering more AAA games as the year progresses. So if you're interested in my coverage, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We'll be doing it for Super Mario Odyssey next, and I can't wait to see you guys in those streams and in those videos. So have a wonderful day and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace guys.